G'day, WFX Malice here, back with my second official YouTube video. I have to say, I had a lot of fun putting the first video together and I've been really keen to get back on and make this one. Now, last week, we made this interlocking wall mount bracket in a way that was dynamic, that allowed you to be able to change the size of it without messing up any of the geometry or the measurements. It was really cool and it really worked well. If you haven't seen the video, go back to my channel and watch it. What was the purpose behind this bracket? To mount this PC to this sim rig. Now, as you can see, the bracket's working well. It's doing its job. However, there's a lot of vibration on this sim rig from when I'm racing, and there is a bit of overhang on the PC, and I'm concerned that I'm gonna knock it off. There is a lot of weight also on this PC. Now, having said that, it is only a scrapper. It's only made out of old parts from my recent upgrade. However, they're still worth about $1,000 or $1,200 there, and there's a lot of work to put it together. So naturally, I want to keep it mounted where it is. Now, before we jump into Fusion 360, I just want to get this out of the way. I am not the bracket guy, all right? I don't want to be known as WFX bracket guy. I'm not changing my name. It's not a thing. Just so happens that these are the first two things I've come up with that I want to put on my YouTube channel. Just want to clear that up. Now, let's see what we've done. Let's fire up Fusion 360. We'll create a new component. I'm going to select the top down view. We'll create a sketch on that pane. First things first, we're going to create a box, which is going to be 30 mil by 12 mil. We're going to create two circles on the midpoint of that one there. First one is going to be five mil. Second one will be 14 mil. Then we're going to create a, another box, just the same as that one. I'm going to make that one over here. So 30 mil by 12 mil. And we're going to create three circles this time. First one is 5 mil. Next one is 13 mil. And the third one will be 15 mil. I'm going to go ahead and create two other uh, circles over here. This first one will be 7 mil, and the next one is going to be 4.5. Now, these are optional. This is going to be my fixture that is going to go through this hole here. So we're going to finish that sketch. Alternatively, you could use a M4.5 or M5 thread bolt. Uh, but I'm just going to print one up. Why not? We're going to go straight into the extrude. We're going to select one, two, and three, leaving that hole open for the fixture. And that one there, we're going to make that 40 mil. Now you can make this any height you want, but then you're going to have to skew the cutouts, which you'll uh, see in just a second. So let's reactivate that sketch. We're going to create an extrude over here, one, two, and three. We're going to leave this space here. We're not going to use that at all. Uh, we're going to offset this. Now this is the part you're going to have to skew if you do go with a different size other than 14. I'm going to go 12.5 offset. Uh, so two times 12.5 is 25. So we're going to make this one here 15. That's going to give us a 40 mil spread. Then we're going to go ahead and create a cut over here. And we're going to select those two. We're going to offset this by 12. And we're going to make this 12 plus 12, 24. So we're going to make that 16 to give us the 40 mil. So just like that, it's now resembling something along the lines of a hinge. It's a piece of engineering that's working, uh, has worked for many years, so should work fine for what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that second body. We're now going to work on the mounting hole for this one. To do that, we're going to create a sketch on this face, which it's not actually drawing on this face. It's actually drawing on the other side because this is a rounded surface. And Fusion saying, I can't draw there. But we're going to go and create a sketch. Now, see how I don't get a midpoint here? What it is doing is it's found the midpoint up here. So Fusion 360 is very smart and going, yep, okay, I know where you're trying to draw. So I'm just going to select that area now. 
have a snap that to there. You may need to zoom in to find that edge. And then we're gonna get it to down here. And we're gonna make sure that that's set to 90 degrees so it's uh, parallel. And I'm gonna okay that. Then we're gonna go ahead and draw a circle. Now I'm gonna do this deliberately this way just so I can show you how to fix this up. But see how it's found that midpoint for me? Seven mil. So see how it's drawn this as a construction line? I'm doing this deliberately for you. Just so if you do happen to draw one, you don't need to undo. You can just click on that circle and press X. The letter X will turn that from a construction line to a solid or vice versa. We'll finish that. We'll go ahead and extrude that hole. Now, I'll show you what I was talking about. It's drawn on the back surface because that's a flat surface. So we don't want to extrude a cut from the back surface. We want to offset that. The body is 12 mil wide. We've got a 14 mil circle, so we want to offset this by five. Minus five, excuse me. And we're just going to manually drag that through. Done. So now we have a nice flat surface to be able to draw our hole on. Hole, uh, shortcut key H. We're just going to click in there. Now it didn't quite snap it to the center point because I haven't drawn a construction line going across. Give it that center point. So we're just going to manually move this and it should snap there. If it doesn't, you can just move it around slightly until you get that center. Uh, alternatively, you could have drawn a midpoint line construction line across there just to give it a center point there. That's fine. Um, so the head is seven mil. The thread hole is going to be 3.5 and it needs to be at least 5 mil deep. Great. Now we're going to do the same on the other one, but we're going to do two on this one because of the offset. Let's zoom out so we can see what I'm doing. So we're going to draw one here and one there. So sketch, same again, let's select that face. Create a construction line. I'm going to do these in two separate lines so we can get the midpoint for the circle. And it's automatically found that edge. And same again here. That's straight up and onto that one. Two circles. And take away the construction. Center point or midpoint rather. Seven mil. And up the top here, seven mil. Done. Same as we did on the other side, we're now going to extrude those. We need to offset these. Now remembering on this side, it's a 15 mil hole. So that circle is now sunk in half a mil on this side, more than the other one. The other one is only 14 mil. So we need to offset this one by negative 4.5. Uh, negative 4.5. And we'll just drag that through, same as we did on the other side. Done. Now we're going to go ahead and create two holes. One. Check those measurements. Seven mil, three and a half, and at least five. We only need that four and a half deep, but five works. And another hole. You saw that one snapped there, that's good. Check those measurements again, hasn't changed, and we are done. So reactivate that body, and if you'll notice here, I'll move that first body, drag it in, I'll just explain what we've done here. I've slightly overlapped that one. I have. Negative, we need that 29.5. I'll just manually type that in. 29.5. Perfect. So, see this gap here? Probably asking, why did I do 14 mil, 13 mil, 15 mil? That's so that this one here being 14 mil and this one here being 15 mil gives us one mil gap here. 
I print with a four, uh, 0.4 mil nozzle. That allows for a little bit of spread. When you 3D print, it doesn't print inside the lines, it prints on the line. So I'm gonna have 0.2 mil there and 0.2 mil there, plus a little bit of extra, depending on how much it squishes down that first layer. And um, that gives us a little bit of gap so it does fit together. And same again on the other side, the bit that we don't see that's hidden inside here. You can see there we've got a nice gap top and bottom just to leave a little bit of space there. Don't need to move that, so I can click cancel and I can go ahead and extrude pin. I'm going to extrude the button head 2mm and then I'm going to extrude the pin by 42mm. And we don't want that as a cut, we want that as a join and I'm going to put a negative taper here. Negative and just going to put a small taper on it just so that it slots in a little bit easier at the top. We have gone half a mil smaller. Um, we've just made that first bit a little bit easier to fit in. That way we can squish it right in and it will hug in that hole nice and tightly. Now, you probably look at this, looking at this and going, Matt, how am I going to 3D print this without having supports? Because if we print it like this, it's going to put supports between this and it's going to put a support down the bottom here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you a little trick. We've done this all in one component. It's not best practice to do it this way, but I've done it in one component so I could easily just drag that in and show you the mechanics of how it works. So if you have done it this way, don't stress. You can save that as it is, and then you can import each body into your slicer quite easily. You can go save as STL, save that body, right click on the other body, save it as STL, and right click on the pin, save as STL, and that way you can export those three individually. So when you put them in your slicer, you will drag the first one in, lay it down flat on its back. Same again, drag in the second body, lay it down flat, drag in the pin, and you can multiply them as many for as many brackets as you need and print them out. Let's jump over to the 3D printer and see how this looks. For the conclusion. Now, this bracket, I have to say, printed off beautiful, straight off the printer. As you can see, look at those nice, clean faces, mounting holes, even the, even the hole for the fixture, worked beautiful. Best part is, is it just fits together nice and snug. That gap we accounted for, worked a treat. Now, as for the pin, did it work? Let's find out. There's that little pin, four and a half mil tapered. I'll just slot it in there. As you can see, that will fit in just like that. You can leave it hanging out if you wanted a semi-permanent. If you want something a little bit more permanent, that satisfying snap, nice and crisp, perfect, just the way I planned it. Best part is, it's not gonna fall out, it's gonna hold it together nicely. Now, you may have noticed on my time lapses, there is a little bit of stringing. It's not a fault of the printer, it's all to do with the time-lapse software. Every time it finishes a layer, the print head moves away from the print job so you can get a nice clean snap, comes back in and finishes the job. So just thought I'd mention it, I've noticed it a few times on there, it does look a little bit ugly, it's not a big thing to clean it up, um, it's just part and parcel with doing the time-lapses. Now, since I've printed this bracket, I've already come up with an idea to turn that into a swivel bracket. Now, obviously a swivel bracket's not gonna work for mounting it to my sim ring. Uh, I want a nice firm bracket for that. However, mounting something like a CCTV camera or home theater speaker up on the wall. Um, I think a nice swivel bracket, I've done some calculations and I reckon I can get about 90 to 120 degrees swivel out of it. So hang about, probably do that video later on this weekend and upload it then. As always, my designs are being uploaded onto Thingiverse. If you haven't checked out my Thingiverse page, go over there, like it, show some love, follow it. Um, always putting new things on there. Not everything that I put on Thingiverse gets onto YouTube, so there is other de designs there that you can have a look at. 
and I hope you've got something out of this. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button and by all means, leave some comments. Love to hear what you've got to say. Thanks for watching.